make sure it's working. Okay. Just posting everything to the, the Snapchat and the Facebook and all of that fun stuff. <laughs> now I have the hiccups. go through my camera folder and like delete a bunch of pictures because I have so many pictures I take for work related purposes like of random parts I should just like go through and clean up and get rid of them It's just dead man switch. Well, let's plug this in, and then I know the phone won't die. Badoop. I kind of enjoy the ambient music that gets that is in this game. Why phone? I turn you one way and you go upside down because reasons. Okay. Let's start the level. Take a cab to Pike Place Market. Confirm. I've got my cider. I've got water. I've got Red Bull if I really need it. Pike Place Market. You catch a cab from Touristville to Pike Place Market, an immersively quiet ride that takes you from probably going to be mugged to probably going to pay too much for your drinks. Uh, compared to the urban wasteland of the Barrens, the downtown area is filled with modern buildings, lighted streets, and unbarred shops, all living beneath the shadows of a massive corporate arcologies. For many of those arcologies are home. <clears throat> for many, these arcologies are home. For others, they are hulking monuments to the where the world went wrong. Famous for its fishmongers, Pike Place Market has been around since the early 1900s overlooking the bay. Now it's a market for all things, legal and illegal. A melting pot of the haves and have-nots. Even though most of the shops are closed, the sight, sounds, and smells of the market hit you from the moment you step out of the cab. I love the world building in this. This is That's what like drew me in. Find Coyote's boyfriend, Paco. Patrick? Did he take out life insurance? The handsome young man turns away from the crowd and fixes his full, completely undivided engine. Sir, you are a beautiful human, but you could be so much more. 
<laughs> what are you selling? Not selling anything. We are giving away the secrets to be a, to a more fulfilling, happy, and productive life. Okay, I'll bite. What are the secrets to a more fulfilling, happy, and productive life? The first step is to simply come and listen. Tomorrow night, Lynn Telestrian will be speaking about the importance of family in the sixth world. Please join us tomorrow, and the secrets to a better life shall be revealed to you. He smiles and turns back to the crowd. Creepy. Refurbished flowers for sale. Synth juice for sale. Just fab today. There's Paco. Nerps. The kid in front of you sports a trademark yellow of the Cutters gang. Young, clean shaven, he stands like he owns the street and everyone on it. He seems distracted though, glancing around with increasing agitation. He looks over as you approach. Watch yourself, what you want. You wouldn't happen to be looking for a coyote, would you? That's none of your fragging business. Who the hell are you? I'm Gregory. I'm looking for a coyote. Need to ask her some questions. I'm the one who's going to pretend you have better manners. I need to find coyote. Relax. We're on the same team. I'm Gregory. I was at the, just at the union. Your girlfriend's gone missing, and I'm helping to find her. Tough guy swagger seems to drain out of Paco. The Joker, the cutter is gone, and before he stand, before you stands a kid in yellow jacket that doesn't quite fit. Coyote's missing. Oh man, that would explain. She's supposed to meet me here over an hour ago. Look, sorry for getting in your face like that. What else do you know? If she's missing, I need to find her. Do you know a fixer name, Mr. Delilah? Coyote was meeting with him a few days ago. Ever heard of a place called Mari's Meat Market? Coyote had a receipt for some zebra meat from there. What? You've been rummaging around her stuff? Yeah, that shop's just on the block. What the hell would she need zebra meat for? Though, beats me. You know a fixer named Mr. Delilah? Coyote had a meeting with him a few days ago. I know if I'm sure. Blake doesn't allow any cutters to take side gigs, though, so I got no reason to deal with him. Coyote hasn't said anything about taking new work. Wait a minute. Drek! I know where she went. Damn, why couldn't she wait? Damn it! Where did she go? The Royal Apart the Royal Apartments. The landlord, Stevie J, runs a drug ring out of that hell hole. Coyote grew up there. Doesn't really talk about it much. She's been looking for a way to settle the score with that guy for years. A few days back I heard that Mr. Mr. Delilah was looking for runners to steal some sort of item out of I'm under Stewie Stevie J's nose. She must have taken the job. I'm sure of it. If his thugs caught her. I'm going over there. You coming? Uh, I'll help get Coyote back, but you better be able to handle yourself in a fight. Things might get ugly. Of course, I know my way around a fight. Stevie J better be ready to be ready for a world of hurt. Now let's get moving. The Royale is just a few blocks from here. I have a teammate. Oh, I can't go in there. There's not a whole lot of exploring to do in here. There's colorful text like that in the game though Manny the small meat stand stands an enormous diversity of dead animals from crow and canine to the exotic and paranormal the pictures on the back of the stand feature a much older version of the man in front of you as soon as he notices Paco the proprietor's eyes become hard and angry what do you want you know we can't afford it more relax man my friend just has questions everything cool here yeah, everything's swell. And he continues to stare daggers in Paco's direction. Name's Manny. Now what do you want? I have this receipt for an order of zebra meat. Still have it for me? I'll look it up. Yeah, I got it right here. Two days past the pickup time. Didn't think anyone was coming for it. Here, it's all yours now. What's your problem with Paco? Why don't you ask him? What the hell's that supposed to mean? It means that your gang likes to stroll through here and we're... Relieve us merchants of our new and my dad stood up to them and he's still in the hospital. Look, that's not my problem. I'm at the bottom of the cutter ranks anyway. I couldn't do directly about that even if I wanted to. Tell that to my dad. I don't have time for this. We need to find Coyote. Wait a minute, I still have some questions. Why would somebody want to buy zebra meat? 
Some people eat it, but I wouldn't recommend that. Tough as nails. We mostly sell it to corp security teams who use it to reward their hellhounds. The flamers go crazier for the stuff for some reason. Oh, Drek, that's why Coyote One is evil meat. Everyone talks about the pet hellhound Stevie J keeps locked up somewhere in the Royale. If she never picked it up, whatever, anything else? You know, someone named Coyote? Nope, don't go much into that shaman stuff. I'll be leaving. As your eyes adjust to the flashing lights, you spot a body of a woman dead on the pavement behind the police line. Panic spreads across Paco's face. Oh, oh no, is that Coyote? This isn't happening. God damn it. Breathe, take a closer look. Paco steps forward and breathes a huge sigh of relief. No, no, it's not her. Thank God. Look, let's not hang around here too long. Too many Lone Star pigs around. Too bad whatever happened here. I'm not going to let anything happen like this happen to Coyote. Here we see another uh, perfect explanation of different etiquettes. Tall, motionless, lone star blocks entry to the crime scene. Behind her, you see the spot lightly face of organ grinder corner of Dresden. It's an active lone star investigation. Please step away from the barrier. Now, what happened here? Let me through, please, and you take a closer look at the body. I'm here to see corner of Dresden. And who might you be? It's all right, officer. He's with me. Dresden steps up to the barrier with a warm grin. Officer looks at with a poorly concealed skepticism. Okay then, make it quick. Lying on the pavement is a body of a young female. Her eyes have been gouged cleanly out, and you notice a string of bite marks along her left arm. So what you bring what brings you out here? Hot on the trail of dead man's killer? Coincident, believe it or not, I stumbled. I take it I've stumbled across another Ripper murder. <clears throat> That's what it looks like. As you can see, the Ripper went for the eyes this time. Pretty clean work. I gotta hand it to him. Our Ripper knows what he's doing. Or she, I suppose. What do you know about the victim? Can you tell she's subdued in some way? Before her eyes were removed? Light around the Redmond franchises in Pike Place, a little far from home. Uh, what about the bite marks on her arm? Any sound of magic use? Ah, completely unrelated. Appears some wild dogs dragged the body out here from the alley sometime after her death. Oh, that's a hot cider. What do you know about the victim? Well, not much. Judson scratches his head absentmindedly. Probably breaking some sort of sanitation protocol. She's been dead for about three hours. Her name was Lucy Warden. Worked at the stuffer shack just around the corner. Looks like she was just leaving work when it happened. Was she subdued in some way? That's a strange thing. There seem, don't seem to be any signs of a struggle. Not a single bruise on her body. Yet, she's clearly alive when the eyes were taken. Died of blood loss shortly after. As to what knocked her out, I won't know until I can run some tests back at the lab. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't really mind a change of scenery. Corner for the downtown branch is out on, out on maternity, so I might told management I'd cover for her on that one, on this one. Plus, I want this sicko caught. Any sign of magic use here? Well, there's an interesting thought. No, nothing obvious, though. I'm sure when McCluskey shows up, he'll call in a full magical forensics team, though, just to be sure. So Ripper takes Sam Watt's liver and this woman's eyes. Any theories? Trophies of some sort, I suppose? Probably of some symbolic significance to the killer? Beyond that, I couldn't speculate. Thanks, Dresden. Hey, I figure if I help you out, there's a better chance to get this scumbag off the streets a little sooner. McCluskey wants that Ripper in a cell. Sure, but he couldn't care less if he takes another dozen murders. Good luck out there, eh? Dresden starts turning back to the body and stops. Speaking of McCluskey, you should probably get going soon before he shows up. Officer Agur. Agur? I don't know how to pronounce that. A plainclothes Lone Star officer is before you spots a tacky hat and a crooked grin to match. So you're the one who's working out for the dead man, eh? McCluskey warned us you might be sniffed around after the Ripper. Lucky for you, I got here before McCluskey. I'm Officer Agur. Pleased to meet you. 
Now, seeing as the crime scene is going nowhere fast, what can I do for you? Uh, I take it you and McCluskey don't exactly see eye to eye. I just say McCluskey and I have conflicting interests. What can you tell me about the murder that took place here? Not much, really. We know it was about three hours ago, and we know that her eyes have been surgically removed. Didn't need Dresden to figure that much out. He's been looking at the body, though, so he might have more. Me, I've been scanning the rest of the scene and looking for witnesses, but no luck so far. Damn Ripper might as well be a ghost. Have any leads on the Ripper that I should know about? Ha! Huh. Plenty if you ask McCluskey, but the truth is, we're as clueless as you probably are. Thanks for your time, officer. Hey, hold on a minute. You haven't put in a donation to the Lonely Orphans Fund. The Lonely Orphans Fund. Lonely Orphans Fund? Yeah, see, you make a contribution to the fund. I put you on a list and let you know the next time we find any orphans that might that you might be interested in. Well, I'm always interested in finding out about any new orphans you discover. Excellent. Shall we say 300 new yen? Uh, all right, you've got a deal. Give officer a gear of the new yen and your comm link code. His face slides up. The splits into a wide grin. Excellent. I'll start an account for you. If we get any useful new leads on the Ripper, I'll give you a call. Now I better get back to work before McCluskey shows up. See you around. Elf. The elf standing before you made quite possibly the ugliest elf you've ever seen. His meticulously clean lab coat, formal format jacket, and old-fashioned bow tie give him the look of an undertaker from centuries past. He notices you approach and locks eyes with you, smiling thin and nerving smile. Hello there, stranger. Might I inquire? Do you know which organ grinder's facility this body will be removed to? Uh, who's asking? The elf giggles a strange, high-pitched warble that you would not expect to emerge from his misshapen face. Oh, I'm no one of consequence. Never mind that, though. A good evening to you and your friend, the coroner. Did you notice the particularly elf standing over there in the crowd earlier? Huh? Where? Scans the spectator starting the crime scene. He's gone now, but he wants to know where the body was. Asking about the body, wondering which organ grinder's facility would be taken to. Interesting. Those might those. There's those who might be interested in purchasing some of her parts, sure, but that's pretty poor form to inquire at the site of the murder. An ugly elf, eh? I'll keep an eye out. Shouldn't be hard to spot if he comes back. Sergeant Agur seems pretty friendly. Can I trust him? Yeah, that sounds about right. Any opportunity to get in McCluskey's way, he'll take it. A bit sleazy, sure, but I'd take McGurr over McCluskey any day of the week. Thanks, Dresden. Anytime. Okay, so now we can go this way. I think this is where I need to go. This way, and then I'm going to buy some BTL. Glad there's no trolls around here. There before he wears standard stuff for shack employee getup. The uniform is well kept and well fitted, but the tears but the tears streaming down this large crooked face do little to improve his appearance. He does not seem to notice you approach. I take it you knew the victim? Yeah, what's it to you? I can don't read the two of you close. Thanks, sorry, we're just not used to folks being friendly around here. The orc wipes tears from his tears away with a dirty napkin. Yeah, we were pretty close. As co workers go, Blind Lucy and I would work here at the shack for three years together. She started on the very same day. Blind Lucy? Well, Lucy wasn't completely blind, but she was legally blind. She had to wear those huge glasses and hold things right up to her face, but she got new eyes about a year ago. How'd she score the new eyes? No, she won't talk about it much. Just call it her stroke of good luck. I guess that luck ran out. See anyone strange in the store lately? See weird stuff every day. It's a stuffer shack. But no, nothing stranger than usual. When was the last time you saw Lucy? Here at the shack earlier today. I think she was heading to the market with to meet a friend. Hell, I was going to join her on her way home, but we got some last-minute customers. Lucy, have any enemies? Well, I'm not sure. 
I know she had an ugly breakup with her boyfriend after getting those new eyes put in. That guy was pretty upset for some reason and wouldn't leave Lucy B. Until she filed for a straining order. That all seemed to die down a while ago, though. That's all I need to know. Thanks for your help, and I'm sorry for your loss. Wait, you wouldn't have to be part of the investigation, would you? Uh, in my own way, why do you ask? Well, Lucy had this necklace, an intricate little carving of a dragonfly on it. Wore it every day. Said her mom gave it to her when she left Denver. Anyway, you know how Lone Star is. All of her stuff we bagged and placed in evidence storage until the seventh world awakens. I just thought... I saw that she can get that necklace back before Lone Star cleans everything up. I could send it back to her family. I feel like I owe that much. Uh, if I can find it at the scene, I'll bring it to you. We know where to bring it back to if we find it. Let's go see if we can find it now. Uh, quickness four, pretend to drop your PDA, then quickly pocket the necklace while bending down to retrieve it. A piece of wood shaped the dragonfly with a small turquoise stones set in it within its eyes. The wood feels very sturdy for its weight. This genuine wood, such rarity in the sixth world, this piece might be worth quite a bit to the right buyer. I love how I'm wearing straight up ninja gear too. This game's all about like doing little things and for karma. That's how you like karma is how you level up. And get better at stuff. So the more karma you get is the better it is. Got it right here. You can send this to her family now. I'm glad I can do so much for Lucy at least. Thank you, friend. I owe you. Happy to help. Okay. Let's head into the Royale. Come on, guy. Let's go find Coyote. Hold on. I want to look around here first. Junkie. You have any extra new yin? I just need some super zoom from the shack over there. Have 10 Nutrisoy cakes will fill you up longer. Thanks, chummer. It's really a game about being nice as much as you can, too, because you seem there's there's bonuses for being nice when playing. Like you get karma quicker and stuff like that, so. Okay, I'm ready. The Royal Apartments. You're up on the most impressive bit of it. Tenement squalor you've seen in a long time. There's a few street lamps here, and while light there is, flickers with uncertainty. Most of the buildings are damaged and tagged. The smell of old, rotting trash mixed with the you don't want to know is where is overwhelming. There's no wonder people living here turn to BTLs. Anything better than this. The better than life chip is the newest drug on the market. You don't need a good life. You can slot in someone else's, live through them and wreck your brain in the process. The front doors of the Royale aren't even locked. As you step inside, you can hear a junkie crying for another hit. It's time to find Coyote and find out what she knows about the night of Sam's murder. Royale Apartments, what a hole. Can't imagine what it was like for Coyote growing up here. hellhole full of junkies. Look like Stevie J's get, gets their rent money and their drug money. If Cody's here, we have to hurry. She's good, but, well, these BTL guys pay to stay well informed. They may have known she was coming. Let's go here. Paco needs to survive. I've got eight karma. I could bump up range combat one more. Get Overwatch.
increased shotgun to level four. And I guess we'll save here. Save often. Hey, you. The woman scratches herself like a cat at a couch like, Hey, can you spare some nougat? My cred stick's a little late too, lady. What can you do for me in exchange? You've got a stink on you, drunk. You drop the chips, get clean. You look like you could use a break. All you need is a few nougat for better than life chip, right? Yes, yes. You need another BTL to get through the day. Something pretty. Something soft. Sure, I get it. Have you seen a woman come through here today? I'm looking for trouble. Maybe I can cred you. Yes, no. Hell, what do you want me to say? I'll tell you anything. Everything. Please. Drop sure knees pleading. I'm sorry, but I can't help you. You should leave this place if you can. Well, that doesn't make sense. The BTLs are here. I just need something. Sad old man. Nothing here. Sad old man. You're not from around here, aren't you? I don't want any trouble. Easy grants and this is good for me information that I'm gone. Bad day to come around here unexpected. Bit of a commotion upstairs. Stevie's men are twitchy. This pretty young thing came through earlier, snooping around like you two. I could tell you she weren't here for the BTLs. Don't know how she got upstairs, but there's a lot more gunfire than there usually is this time of day. Did you see her come back down? Nope. A couple of Stevie's men came around asking what anyone saw. Kept my mouth shut, I did. Where's Stevie hold up? He's got the whole top floor all to himself. Fancy he's king around here. Great, now this is an extraction. Hail man, you know how to get upstairs? You've been right friendly, but I can't get you on the wrong side of Stevie J. I'm sure you understand. You've already stuck your neck out to help us. We'll find another way. I think if I'd known better, I could have... Looks like there's a hole in the wall behind this old dresser. Move the dresser. Wall is crumbling. Though a hole you can see a rickety stairwell leading up. It seems stealing it, but it seems to only access through the locked apartment next door. Yeah. So I can't get there because I can't get through the hole. Uh, and we're going to get into our first big combat sequence here. Stop your pleading. Your boy is dead, so we're collecting. Please, Riker. No, he's my son. Get your ass back to your squat before I break something else. I'll send him upstairs instead. You want me to send... You want me to send... Give him to Stevie? Maybe after he kills that girl we caught. You pig, give Zipper back now or... Or you'll bleed on me. Zipper's gone. Get yourself a new kid. Oh god, no. Please, no. Look, it's a simp. This is my home. Get out. What was that all about? Why do you care? It, it's my son. The bastard took my son. Who took your son? One of Stevie J goons. Stevie J's goons. Riker. He runs that filthy BTL squad across the hall. My son Zipper. He's not a strong boy, and Riker knows it. Lured him with those damn chips. Better than life. Ha! What life? And now they're torturing him in there. Why would they do that? Those sickles have a SimSense recording studio over there. Overheard one of them saying they have a special guest up in the penthouse. They plan to torture her with a recording of my son's dying breath. 
That must be Coyote. Coyote, you have to get up there. They've got her up there. Keep it together, Paco. She's still alive. Stay frosty. Yeah, yeah, you're right. We'll be. I'll be okay. What about my son? I'll see if I can save your son while we're saving our friend. Thank you. Thank you. You don't touch that. I heard you're in the middle of a recording session. I sure am. My gear is state of the art, if you can believe it. I were to tour this amazing studio. I think I'm in too busy for chit chat. Buy something or get out. What's that sound? Who knows? Could be anything. Probably someone riding the wrong end of accuser execution BTL. We get all kinds. I can hook you up if you're interested. I've decided that I need to kick your ass. As he just walks away. Gotta tell Stevie. Get out here. gleams at the end of the hallway at a place almost amongst the filth. Okay, we'll run to here and then we'll Perfect. He also has a gun. Slowly grinds into motion. Let's go over here and save the sun. to get him inside here as well. And we'll just end turn. Oh, they came through there. Trick. Detail junkies twitch in the throes of their assorted dreams. One board man stands ready to administer another chip if the creds are good. Oh, didn't mean to kill them. Oh, well, they're done. paper some numbers on it oh I need it in here recording studio reboot studio software hey Riker what the hell Who are you? Get out. Can't you see I'm working here? Unlike your friend, I can tell you're not going to be reasonable. Afraid I have to kill you.
another zipper. I don't know who you are, but thanks. You got lucky today, kid. If I were you, I'd play it safe from now on. You don't get lucky twice. Oof, I don't think I can move. Can you at least tell my dad? You take the BTL recording. <laughs> Zipper's okay, but he's pretty messed up though. I don't know how to thank you. I think we can run back over here and... Nope, can't talk to them now. I like that bookshelf. bookshelf. It's kind of groovy. Into the passcode. Push button for penthouse. Greg, if we go up there, I'm not leaving until we find Coyote. Penthouse suite. Stevie J's penthouse apartment might have been nice at one point in time. Classic even. But now it's filled with neon tube lighting, broken down furniture, piles of rubbish, and crates containing who knows what. Still, compared to the rest of what you've seen, it's positively palatable. Palatial. The only thing mar marring the penthouse pseudo luxury is a woman's cry of pain in the distance, followed by laughter. Someone's being tortured for another's pleasure. You step deeper into the apartment. Four more karma. Spend karma. There's zero point whole hoarding your karma unless you need to like get up to like level five or something. But early on, getting up uh, intelligence and stuff like that, like strength, body, that stuff all makes sense to do early on. We get strength up because there's things that require strength. And then we'll do save, we'll do it. Oh, I can't save in here. Uh, let's go over here. A raspy manic voice booms over the penthouse PA system. You think you're coming here and shoot up my place? Do you know who I am? Who are you? Don't you know who I am? It's always fun playing the smart ass. Yo, dude's got bad aim. Uh-oh. Ooh. That was a crit. That hurt. We got a healer. I'm trying to eat my donut at the same time as streaming. Not going so well. Oh, he's out of ammo too? Reload. You got anything else? Spray and pray. The only downside to the early shotguns is they're not super strong. I'll go back to this. 
Come on. But no, I can't. I will have bloody gurgle. Stevie J is no more. And we need to use an item. Oh, that's Overwatch. Confirm reload. Confirm reload. Oh, there it is. Uh, 10, 10, 10. Picks up 10 HP. And we'll use another 10 HP. this up. Stevie J's passcodes. Come in here. Can I end combat? No, it just switches between the two now. Shove the zebra meat through the bars. Help me serve you with a few massive bites and let our contented growl open the door. I'm reloading. So I'm reloaded. And then Paco can run there. Find Coyote. Keep Coyote alive. I need to run all the way in here. About time you got here, Paco. Who's your friend? Just another professional. Need to ask you some questions. No, no, Cody. We need to get you back to the Union. Miss Kubota has, has that med lab in the basement. No, I need to finish the other thing I came here for. I need to get some thing for Mr. Lila first. A stash of gems. Thought you said you'd never be do another deal with that man. Okay, Curly, hang on. I gotta go let my dog out. One second.
Okay. How do I always, always end up tangled? Okay, back to the game. Look, Paco, I need an excuse to come back here and settle some debts. Figured, figured I'd may as well get paid for it. Her voice is strong still, but her body is beginning to shake. Paco, help her get back to the Union. I'll find those gems for you, then meet you there. Coyote looks at as though she's about to argue, but says nothing. Come on, Coyote, let's go. They mosey on away. Somewhere around here, somewhere. Oh, probably in here. Uh, just gotta check these boxes. Some loose new yin, new yin. I'm gonna clip full on new unit and a med kit. It's just old junk. Well then where are the Oh, in here maybe? These are the gems. Bag filled with precious gems. Fine, Stevie Stash. Can't if there's anything else in here. No, doesn't look like it. Curly, light on. Light on your blankie. Head back to the Seamstress Union? Confirm. Return to the Union. Despite Cody's clear desire to stand out on her own two feet, Paco needs to help her through the door to the Seamstress Union. Heads raise and the front room of the bar falls strangely silent. Paco stands by her side now, not speaking, his dark eyes flat with fury. Coyote presses a rag to her clawed up face. She winces but manages to keep control as she breathes in slow, deep breaths to manage the pain. Taking a closer look, you see her arm isn't much more than shreds of meat and broken bone held together by tendons and burned skin. It'll be a miracle if she still has it by the end of the night. This is Kubota tending is tending bar herself when Paco walks. Walk carries the mangled and leading coyote into the union. As soon as the boss lady lays eyes on her missing bartender, the place gets quiet fast. By the time she runs the bar to meet you, Coyote's color of wet spackle and there's something new in her eye. Fear. The woman has faced down hellhounds, but the sight of Mrs. Kubota has her staring at the floor and mumbling. Woman. How dare you miss two shifts and then come back and bleed on my floor. I'm sorry, Mrs. Kubota. I had a run that went bad. Soka, I can see that. Your arm is a mess. Was this your crusade again? Do not answer. It will only upset me further. You caused me to worry about you, Coyote, and that distracted me from my business. Hi, Mrs. Kubota. My apologies again. Cherry, take her downstairs to Dr. Castle. Yes, ma'am. And tell Castle about something new and shiny where that arm used to be. Mrs. Kubota, I can't afford a cyber arm. I'm aware of your financial situation. When you are healed, we will discuss concept of Giri, the debt of honor. Now go, bleed elsewhere. Yes, ma'am. 
More karma! Oh yeah, I can't do anything about that. Her anger at Coyote's rashness slowly washes from her eyes and replaced by tears. She sniffs, wipes them away, and inclines her head to you. Domo arigato, Greggy. That girl is precious to me. It's not often that we see acts like this in the Barrens. You have performed a great service for my little family, and I welcome you into my home. Consider it yours while your work keeps you here. We both know that words are mere air. Beyond my thanks, I offer you remuneration. Please take it as a show of respect. It's just water that tries to kill me. Not my apple cider. Oh, that's embarrassing. <clears throat> this looks like my kind of place. Wiz, I could use a bunk. I'm honored, Mrs. Kubota. Thank you. You are most welcome, and I offer more than simple lodging. You'll find that there is more to the union than meets the eye. Low is a small facility available exclusively for discriminating independent operatives like yourself. In it, you will find vendors selling the best gear the black market has to offer. Fully equipped cyberdock <coughs> and a secure place to rest when the dreck hits the fan, as they say. Mm. <coughs> My, you are quite the entrepreneur. Indeed, I normally require a percentage of the render's income for the use of this facility, but as I said, you are family now. Consider it on the house. G gain entrance, play G-A-F-F-C on the piano. <clears throat> I have nine karma. I can... Put one into body, because I definitely want more body. I can't bump that up anymore, and that's maxed out. <clears throat> Intelligence. Actually, I wouldn't mind this. And seeing the enemy HP would be very nice. <clears throat> Mr. Johnny Clean. Brand new mop and surveying the crowd of the Union. Thanks for the tip the other day. Mrs. Kavota said I should go to the safe house, but I don't know, quite know where that is. Gano's a little bit out of tune. Check it out. <clears throat> Inspect the piano, play chopsticks, play G-A-F-F-C. -A You're a natural. You should give up shadow running and become a touring pianist. Johnny does not look impressed. He slowly picked the notes out on the keyboard, they spark a faint memory of wonder, immediately forgotten as the entire piano slides to the left, revealing a hidden staircase. You descend the staircase into the Union safe house. <clears throat> bon, bon, bon. The entrepreneurial Mrs. Kubota has combined everything a runner might need into a one-stop shopping experience, black market equipment, high-end magical talismans, and a fully stocked cyber surgery dealership. This is mustache. <clears throat> Alernon. Past the bar, the edges of the safe house become somewhat indistinct due to the magical haze surrounding the a particular elf. The man seems only half of this realm, his mind wandering the far horizons of astral space while his body pedals in otherworldly wares. 
Good evening, young human, and welcome to this humble home that we call the Union. I'm Alarnon, half dream. To ease your way through the sixth world, I offer you the best in magical foci, spells, and fetishes from the Conjuring Spirits. Let me see what you have. So, if you were a shaman or like the magic user, this is the guy you'd be dealing with. He deals in some weapons and some spells and conjuring things up and shy casting and consumable things like that. I can't use any of it. <clears throat> TB Gruber Gruberman. Theodore Buster Gruberman is a well groomed orc dressed in precision dressed with a precision that suggests the straight lines of military officer's uniform. His hair is cropped short, high and tight, as they say. And the neatness of this presents is only compromised by an uneven tusk protruding from his mouth. The only other defect is his picture of perfection as this man's cybernetic grave arm, which is obviously which is obvious enough to be noticeable but not so obvious to ruin the line of his suit. <clears throat> When he speaks, his orc's voice is soft and thoughtful. He talks almost exclusively in numbers, calibers, ranges, rounds per second, arc of fire, razoring factor, tensile strength, and of course, price. Bunker Buster Gruberman, at your service. Friends call me Buster. I also know, I also answer to Sergeant, Sir, and even Theodore on occasion. Anytime you're in the market for firearms, ammunition, or ordnance, I'm your man. How can I help you? What exactly do you sell here? Things that go bang in all shapes and sizes, plus other odds and ends on occasion. Consider your own personal armory. All weapons are guaranteed to meet strict UCAS military spec or your money back. In addition, I can handle routine maintenance, repairs, and upgrades, if you so desire. And if that wasn't enough, I also teach safety and instructional course every weekend. This week we're covering bayonets. Mark my words, they're making a comeback. So what can I get you? Let's take a look at what you got. I don't think I've got any money to buy anything right now. I could move up to a... a slightly cheaper... Oh, it's like a step better, I think. Yeah, it's a slightly better shotgun. <clears throat> And you can see these are the drones you can get. There's a Doberman or a Smoker. And they require action pool as well. So when you have that out, you don't actually get to attack because they use your action points. So I think I'm going to opt for that. Let's see what he's got for consumables. Just grenades. Ooh, and some med kits. I think I might take another med kit. We'll go confirm. We'll go here. We're going to... Unequip that, unequip that, and then in this slot we're going to equip that. And then we'll sell that. Let me take a look what you've got. View stash, sell items. Sell. Exit. Not right now, thanks. Eric Mersman, we met upstairs. He deals in clothing. <clears throat> change your clothes, change your life, right? Not only will you look better, not that you look bad now or anything, but each one will, will help you keep you up on the right side of this ground. Take a look. Now, the only thing he's got is the alley punk armor, which is better than what I have right now, but... But it looks so goofy. David, try the second. Every inch of tech alcove is covered in a chaotic patchwork quilt of circuit boards, chips, wires, displays, and a million other things that you can't identify. In the eye of a techno bits storm stands a dwarf, immaculately dressed and supremely calm. I know that look. Don't let the size of the shop fool you. I can get any matrix hardware or software that exists. And if it doesn't exist, then I can get it made for you. Any questions? I can answer anything gear you need. <clears throat> What do you have for sale? I don't have a data jack and I don't have anything in decking yet. So this is like the one downside to my build right now. I'm very weak when it comes to the decking. 
and see you later. I'm being rude. Let me introduce you to our resident decker, my good friend, Johnny Clean. Well, in the same overalls that you saw him upstairs down here, leaning over a workbench, crammed with circuit boards, cables, chips, Johnny Clean seems a totally different person. You get the impression that Johnny was once a hot, as hot and invisible as most the infamous deckers today. Good to see you down here. Have to be of help if I can. Why are you dressed as a janitor? Did I stand out upstairs? No, janitors never do. When I was younger, I had a rep for getting in and out of systems so cleanly that no one knew I was there. Half the matrix runs that earned me my rep were made possible because I was able to get inside the facility posing as a janitor. Now it's just sort of a part of me. Is it true you're part of the Echo Mirage team? Let me take this one. Listen, I've known this guy for over a decade and he's been smart enough not to tell me. So he's sure as hell not going to tell you right about anything about those days. For your health and his, best let the subject drop. See you guys around. Dr. Shara Castle. Dr. Shara, make it quick. I need to operate. Thanks for helping me out back there. Look like you could use a hand. Ouch. Bad jokes right now. Bad joke right now. She looks down at her mangled arm. Notice how her mangled arm is on a table. Okay, folks, I'm going to have to ask you to go sit in the waiting area. Watch some trivia watch some tribute or something. This young lady and I have to go to work. I never said what kind of cyber arm she paid for. I want something badass. Got one with a laser inside? You'll take what I give you, lady. Now let's have a look at your face. Leave it. Excuse me? Coyote. I earned this face by being stupid. I'm going to keep it. End story. Whatever you say, kid. Once it was with moves, she sinks the syringe into Cody's coyote's thigh. Night, nighty night. <clears throat> Cody looks both better and worse than you last saw her. All the gaping holes are plugged, and she's sporting shiny new cyber arm. But now that the adrenaline's worn off, she's clear she needs some rest. Good morning. Thanks, a miracle of modern shine combined with the dog's castle's magical healing powers i'm almost as good as new better really nice arm thanks mrs kaboto had me working it off for the rest of my life you look like you got something on your mind she flashes you a puzzled look what kind of questions about sam watts sam watts what about him sam's dead holy dreck sam can't sam surprised he was on a downward spiral for a long time what can I tell you? You served Sam the night he died. What do you remember about that night? It was a pretty average night. Regular crowd, as I remember. Sam was drinking with a guy named Armitage. Jake Armitage? Yeah, you know him? Met him. He's a charmer, too. I like gingers. Anyway, Jake and Sam were having a few. Well, Jake was having a few. Sam was tossing back, but good. Eventually, he got loud the way someone he sometimes did when he mixed drinking with who knows what. Mrs. Kubota wanted him ejected. Mr. Clue wasn't around, can't remember why, so she asked Jake to do the honors. Jake driving out back into the alley, and that's the last time I saw Sam. He said he got loud. Do you remember what he was saying? A standard Sam Drek. How he grew up rich and didn't deserve this. How he hated his mother. How he loved his mother. It's pretty pathetic stuff. I heard you liked him. I did. He made me laugh. No one else seems to like Sam's jokes, but I did. No accounting for taste. Sam made some bad jokes. Not when he was sober. He was chill and funny. I guess I knew the best of everyone here. Sorry he's gone. Uh, did Sam have any enemies? Enemies? That's hard to say. Sam partied hard, and when he did, he ran his mouth off pretty good. He got his ass kicked more than once. On more, on more than one occasion. But no, I don't think he had any enemies. At least none that I'm aware of. Where did Sam live? On the streets, mostly. He'd have occasionally convinced someone to let him flop on their couch... But he'd always overstay his welcome and then get kicked out after a few days. Sometimes I'd sneak him down here just so he could crash on one of the bunks. He used one the night before I saw him last. How bad was his drinking? If it was just drinking, it wouldn't it would have been bad. But Sam was just wasn't the monogamous monogamous type. 
he dabbled in everything. Booze, chips, drugs. He loved the nitro. Whatever he could get his hands on. It wasn't always like that. But once he got sick, he started using more and more stuff to try and forget about it. Sam was sick. Dying, didn't you know? Yeah, everyone could tell. You just look at him and see he was walking corpse. It had to be the drinking. Then he disappeared for a while and one day came back. Looked good even. And back all better. Looked good even. All better. Just like that. He said his mom helped him out. Never said how though. Thanks, Coyote. Now I need you to do something for me. What do you need, babe? I need to talk to Mr. Delilah about the Royale run. He's usually upstairs. Tell him I didn't get the gems. Maybe I can take another run when I, when I recover. I will. Oh, I need to investigate Sam's bunk. Back downstairs. There we go. A bunk is a mess and reeks of booze. Searching through the sheets, blankets, and pillows, you find an old photograph that's seen a lot of wear. Look at the image of the pharaoh photograph. Pictures of a blonde boy and girl, both at about age 14. He's sitting on the dock at the edge of a lake. They appear to be twins. The boy has his arm tied around the girl's shoulders and is mugging for the camera. The girl is planting a kiss on his cheek while making rabbit ears behind the head with her fingers. Check the back of the photo. Written in woman's hand with the words, Sam and Jessica, Lake Summer, Sumasha State Park, Summer of 2040. Pocket the photo. In Shadowrunner, circles is do term doctor is often used quite liberally to describe any saw bones with a needle and thread. But in the case of the union's resident medical expert, nothing can be further from the truth. The safe house boasts fully equipped medical suite, complete with shamanic, shamanic fetishes. This is the sixth world medicine of the highest caliber. Doctor herself is an unassuming sort, perhaps a type to go unnoticed entirely. If not for this brightly spirit perched on her shoulder like her own personal gargoyle. Spirit's burning eyes follow you constantly, even as a doctor's own eyes are buried in her charts. However, she does look up long enough to acknowledge your approach. I'm Dr. Castle. I understand you're instrumental in bringing Coyote back to us. Thank you for that. And, I'm su I, and I suppose you were the one who patched her up. Impressive work. You're welcome, Doc. And I gotta say, that was some work you did on her. Your talents may be going to waste down here. High praise for a simple arm swap, especially since she wouldn't let me repair her face. He wants you eyeballing the facilities. I can tell you're surprised to find fully service medbay under the dive bar in a slum. Don't be. This is a Shadowrunner bar, after all. For every purveyor of cyberware and trauma kits, there is no better place to set up practice. I patch, I patch runners up, install and maintain their cyberware, and provide medical supplies for their runs. I may not be as mobile as Dog Wagon, but I'm the next best thing. Can I help you with anything? Uh, what cyberware do you have available? This is where things get interesting, because I can get I can spend 750 New Yen and get a Renraku Basic Cyber Eye. Oh yeah, Essence. When you use up all your Essence, uh, thing like things go bad, like you die. So Renraku Basic Cyber Eye replacement extends and enhances your vision, adds three percent to hit. And that goes in for your eyes, and then you can get. You can get dermal plating, uh, adds two to armor, uh, bone lacing, gets plus one body. So you can get like maxed out, but then you can get more by adding cybernetic things. Requirements for riggers and deckers and those who want to use smart link weapons. Uh, silver tech cyber arm. Silver technology's basic replacement limbs that add six health, six HP. Uh, I usually get at least get the eye. I've seen this changes my essence after operation to five. Cyber causes enhanced essence loss. This affects the magic rating of your character, and as magic is equal to essence, as magic is equal to essence rounded down, magic is very important for spellcasters. The base number of spell slots available to the caster is equal to half their magic rounded down. Therefore, losing essence can cause spell slots to be permanently lost. In addition, each mad point of magic loss increases all spell cooldowns by plus one. Casting a spell again while it is cooling causes drain 
damage to the caster. You cannot have less than one essence. What's that on your shoulder? So I guess the and healing rituals for I perform on my patients after surgery, dramatically reducing the recovery time. Not standard procedure, of course, but the results speak for themselves. <laughs> Opera. Um... Need all them. We give the stones to this guy upstairs. Don't choke on my... This little eye looks like a... It looks small, tough, and with untraceable shoddy on his back. A heavy vest under his trench coat. Mr. Delisle, Delila, uh, looks small and tough, with an untraceable shoddy on his back and a heavy vest under his trench coat. He's got the air of someone who gets things done and occasionally does them himself. He might be an ex-runner, one of the rare ones smart enough to move over to management when he felt his reflexes slowing down. What do you want, Mr. Delila? We have business to discuss. What business? I have no business with you. We're with Coyote. She's indisposed at the moment. Indisposed at the moment. At the mention of Coyote, he finally gives you his full attention. Why didn't you say so? Coyote is late. My client is getting anxious. Where is she? Downstairs trying out her new arm. Your run went south. She's downstairs in the med bay. Got her arm torn off in the on the job. No kidding. Oh, whatever. She's tough. She'll pull through. So who are you two? Gregory. Greggy. He's Paco. Great, we're all introduced. Now give me the stones. The instant the jeweler's scope in an instant there's a jeweler's scope in his eye, moving quickly through what appears to be the most valuable stones. He stops when he finds to be what an ordinary pebble inscribed with Hebrew characters. That's the one. He pockets it. Okay. You done good, but you're late. And Cody knows that this is that in this case, late equals no payment. But I'm feeling Magnamious tonight, so you guys can keep up the rest. You guys can keep the rest of the gems as your reward. Deal. Mr. Lyle looks you up, up and down. Uh, you look at the sort of man who might run a crew of your own one day. You might need a little talent. When that happens, you come to me. I'll set you up. He dismisses you with a wave. It looks like you impressed him. I know offense for those gems. Bang gas. Follow me. I'm going to get more money. Fan grass. I'm busy talking on his comm link, checking his heads up display and monitoring a runner standing nearby at all at the same time. He's an intentional man. You get the sense he likes to look busy. I'm Van Grass. Make it quick. Biz is good. Talk to me. We have some pretty things to sell. You want to see them? I have a fondness for pretty things. Let me see. You hear a servo in Vangrass cyber eye whir as magnifying lens slips into position. He bends his head over the stones for two seconds, maybe less. Hmm. Where'd you get this strike? Gumball machine? I'll give you a thousand for it. Um. If I had more, if I had more strength or ed academic, I could... I can just take the payment. Done. Give me your cred stick. I'll find a thread. Find a fence for the remaining stones. Okay. Now I just need to return to Coyote. And let's go on down. I suppose I should tell Mr. Clue. The hull-controlled bouncer in immaculate suit stands impassively as ever. The absence of dust on his broad shoulders is the only real indication that the man ever moves. He nods to you as you approach. Evening. I see Coyote's back. 
looking a little only looking only a little worse for the wear. We have you to thank for that. The having whack part, yes. You have the gratitude of everyone here, especially mine. Couldn't stomach losing anyone else so soon after what happened to Sam. Uh, you feel protected over the people here. You're just a big old sheepdog, aren't you? Not the comparison made of most trolls, but I'm happy to defy, to defy expectations. Mind if I ask you a few questions? I haven't minded so far. Do you have to be extra for manicure on your hands that big? It's not the size of the charge before. It's the blood under the fingernails. Uh, anything else about Sam's death? People are saying it was a ripper, but people say a lot of things when they don't about what they don't know or what they don't understand. You know where I can find a fence? I think Van Grass at the bar is near the stage. Dwarf with the cyber eye. Can't miss him. How long have you been working for Mrs. Kubota? I crawled in here after I go bleh, after I woke. Mrs. Kubota took me in and gave me a job. I've been here ever since. I should be going. Catch you around. Return to Coyote. You're back. I think the highlights of the Wolves game will be on soon. Want to take a load off and watch it with me? Yeah, great. What was it? A photo. Did you know Sam? Has, did you know Sam had a twin sister? Yeah, I did. He mentioned her once or twice. I didn't. Didn't sound like they got along that well. He was rambling on about her last time I saw him. By that point, he was completely gone. I really couldn't follow what he was saying, but he sounded miserable. Your comic chip says the screen shows the smiling face of Officer Agur. If he's smiling, it must be about money. All cops only take as happy as you. Yeah, we have our own clubhouse and everything. As per our discussion, I'm informing you of another Ripper murder. The victim worked at NTCSB in investigation fa facility down at the docks. You owe me for this. I'll put it on my tab. You there now? Better get here quick before McCluskey arrives. Image on the PDA dissolves as the call ends. Another Ripper murder? Where? The docks. I've got to go. Okay, listen, I want to help. You dragged me out of that Royale before. Something bad happened. Worse than getting my arm torn off. And Sam was my friend. You head to the docks. I'll see if I can track down Sam's sister, Jessica. She might be able to help us. I'll see you when I get back. Talk to Miss Kavota quick. And then... Uh, what do we got here? Mrs. Kubota. Mrs. Kubota? Alice may be of service. Is Mr. Delilah here tonight? Yes, Mr. Delilah is in the back bar. There, that's usually where he does business. You mentioned Coyote Crusade. What is it? Coyote grew up in the Royale, but managed to escape that life. However, her cousin was apparently not so lucky. He came to town about a year ago and fell in with the wrong circle. He's introduced to sim chips and became addicted to BTLs. Coyote has been tearing her way through the club chip houses for months now, searching for him and acting as if acting as a one man one woman cleanup crew. If you don't mind, how did you get involved in all this? I am a former runner. Now I provide a safe haven and a marketplace for runners who need trustworthy place to congregate and do business. Arnie Johnson's or fixers here tonight. In addition to Mr. Delilah, you may wish to speak to Van Grass. He often he's often stage side. Van Grass is most often a receiver of found articles, but he occasionally has work. Ugh. Take the cab to the Seattle South Seattle docks. Confirm. The start of this game is very much um, lots of character build up and like explaining how everything works. Uh, South Seattle Docks. Leaving the Seamstress Union behind, you head to 
to the docks. The Ripper killed Sam, and maybe he or she slipped up with the latest victim, left some useful evidence. Only one way to find out. South Seattle is your typical industrial area. Grit, grime, and gray. The rain doesn't help matters any. Layers of dirt mixed with abandoned wood pallets repurposed to, into makeshift furniture for the day workers. Garbage collector, garbage collection in the gutters of the broken down street. <coughs> district Butyl is this district's middle name. Your destination, the National Transportation Safety Board Warehouse. It's located on the small strip of dock towards the less maintained end of the waterfront. Despite the presence of those who linger in such places, it's quiet as you approach the gate. It's a streetwalker that I can talk to. Hey, you looking for a good time? Don't know anything about NTSB? Yeah, the bums around here have been stealing old crap from that place for years. Not worth my time, though. The guard looks bored. He toys with his gun absentmindedly, like he might shoot something on a whim just to watch it die. Hey, you're about to dress poor ass on corporate property. Are you looking to get gusted street scum? I'm working with the Lone Star on the crime scene investigation at the NTSB warehouse. If I had security officer, Gurr call me in. Needs me to rule out if the cooler would bypass security or if they were let in. Looking for my kitty cat. Here, kitty. I'm the new maintenance guy. This is my first day. Sure you are. And I'm low, low fire. King of the Dragons. Beat it. Get out of here. Hmm. Well, that's that's not good. There's got to be another. I'm fairly certain there's a way in. Hey, that's mine. You raise you a pack of wolves. That their ladder is rightfully mine. Can I borrow it for a few minutes? Five, eh? Sure. Maybe that noodle machine is still working. I don't know where I put this ladder, but there must be a spot where I can put it. The only place I can see is you can probably hear my dog ripping up his blanket. There's somewhere where I can place the ladder down that gets me in. Can I talk to the streetwalker again? Not me, a friend of mine. I need you to have some fun with the guard by the fence around the corner. She looks at you knowingly. All right, 20 bucks buys you about five minutes distraction. Then I got to get back to work and earn some real new yen. It's a big gun you have there. Standard issue, ma'am. I don't understand how this works. There's still razor wires along the top, but whatevs. I'm up, I'm over, I'm in. You're about to transition to a new location. Continue. Cancel. Let's do this first. Save game. Dead man switch. Confirm. Uh, so tomorrow night I do plan on starting a Skyrim playthrough. Uh, I'm probably going to start around 6 p.m. because I got a bunch of stuff to do in the morning. Uh, the warehouse inside the large gray warehouse is a, as typical as the outside. High ceilings adorned with girders and rickety catwalks. Top a huge utilitarian. Top a huge. Utilitarian room. 
Concrete and steel walls meet a concrete floor. This is a place for storing things and nothing more. Despite the quiet on the outside, the inside is a hornet's nest of Lone Star officers going about their business. The center of the activity is Emerald City Ripper's latest victim. With the uniforms everywhere, no one stops you at the door. It seems this case hasn't leaked to the press yet. Lone Star, no, you've got a job to do. So I plan on a Skyrim, starting a Skyrim playthrough tomorrow. Uh, McCluskey's here already. Um, and I decided I was going to do a took your sweet time, didn't you? You know, traffic these days. Fill me in. We had time to go over the evidence while you were en route. Turns out this might not be a ripper murder after all. I left the computer in the office over there if you want to see for yourself. The victim worked here at the NTSB warehouse as a black box researcher. NTSB, National Transportation Safety Board. This warehouse use, is used to go over the wreckage from plane crashes to determine what happened. Uh, the Vic was in charge of their highest priority inv investigation at the moment. We've gone through the victim's computer and his case notes indicate he was selling secrets. Idiot kept records. Scientists don't make good criminals. Tell me about it. Some runners like you probably off to to cover up this corpse master involvement and tried to make it look like a ripper killing. Here's the office key. Check it out for yourself if you want. Quickly talk to Dresden. Draggy, surprised to see you here. Let me guess. Officer Gary tipped you off. I suppose that you must have made an impression on him at the market yesterday. Or your cred stick did, at any rate. Anyway, surprise. We've got another, another ripper. Ripper victim on our hands. Looks like business is good for dial work these days. So what's the story with this one? Victim's male, mixed Native American descent, age 38. Based on the condition of the body, it looks like he was killed around 2 in the morning. Cause of death? Unknown. Several, several internal organs were removed from his body after death, quite gruesomely. I'm not sure if the killer even knew what he wanted before they started cutting. Not much else to tell yet, really. He does have a lot of pre-existing scar tissue, so he probably had a major surgery at some point in recent history. Fortunately, with the organs gone, I can't determine the nature of the surgery. Any idea which organ the Ripper was after this time? Well, the killer definitely took out the lungs. The more I look at it, though, the other missing organs may, abyss, may, just, may just be eviscerated within the chest cavity. Is Ms. Klusky getting close to a suspect? How's Officer Aguirre doing on the case? He seems like a real go-getter. Uh, different trophy from each victim. Any theories? Sorry, I don't do theories. I'm just a scientist who happens to refer dead people. However, while there was a massive damage in the chest cavity, I can see that the victim's lungs were transplants, which is interesting, since another victim's missing heart was also a transplant. Granted, modern medicine has made organ transplants relatively easy, but it is an odd coincidence. But as a scientist, it's just that, a coincidence. This is only the third body I've personally examined. One of our f other branch managers handled the other two. If I find out, if I find more that the, the victims had organ transplants, I'll let you know. McCluskey getting any closer? McCluskey couldn't find his ass with both hands. Don't tell him I said that, though. How's Officer Gare doing on the case? Gare would love to solve this before McCluskey can get his gold detective sealed. Plus, he'd love to see McCluskey suck it in front of his front in front of his superiors. He's already tried to bribe me to keep him keep information from McCluskey and slip it to him. I'm inspired by the tireless pursuit of justice. Did you take the money? Did you? Do you have any idea how much this job pays these days, sir? I don't think Gar's office salary is going to do much to seduce, seduce me into helping him. Who's that woman over there? No clue. She just showed up. Next of kin, I think. I'm gonna take a look around. Good luck out there. Work cyber terminal has been left on, presumably by the Lone Star investigators. Read the notes on case file 95. 95 Federal Boeing Jetliner ID. Uh, mechanical issues on you know, May Day at 3.04 a.m. By 2.54 a.m. Pilot reported that the alt terminal was reading the negative values. The co pilot takes over the controls as the pilot leaves the cam to investigate the rear of the plane. 
258 pilot cannot be contacted or located by plane steward. Copilot radios in a mayday. Plane crashes into the empty field in the western North Dakota. 96. Pratt and Whitney unmanned. Uh, summary redacted. Time log redacted. 98. The file has been corrupted. Private notes. Uh, appear on screen at the NTSB chat when near the UCASC boom subordination border crash is reportedly the result of an equipment failure reading the further into the investigators note however you find substantial evidence linking the crash to an experimental to run Raku research initiative this information can be worth a great deal to the right buyer you download the research series notes to your PDA Something to the victim's locker, the door is slightly ajar, and say you see several of the dead man's personal items. Inspect the toothbrush. Blue toothbrush is still out from being used. It smells of mint and cigarettes. This appears to be the victim. Uh, inspect the comb. Black plastic has some wiry gray hair stuck in it. Leave the locker. Shannon Hafsky, you're not a cop. She looks up watching you warily. I'm independent. What's your relationship to the dead man? He's my brother. I've been trying to speak with him. But I'm afraid his spirit is too disoriented in his, by his recent journey to answer me. You're a shaman? Yes, for all the good it's doing me. If I could just make contact, I might be able to deliver justice to, to allow my brother's spirit to rest. Were there any other witnesses? Not as so far as I can tell. Not among the living, anyway. My brother's spirit may not be alone in here this night. Yes, there are others. Other spirits may be of help. Her features harden frustration as if she's searching for something that remains elusive. Sly, sighing, she opens her eyes to fix at you with the stare. We can't do it alone. What do you need? Our house contains spirits of crash victims trapped between worlds. The way they wish to help, they wish to be heard, and I think they have something to say about my brother's murder. Lone Star won't help me in there. Won't let me in there, but you seem to have the run of the place. If I'm personal items that belong to the victims, I might, I believe I can summon a spirit to speak with us. I need at least two objects. Can you find them for me? Uh, do what I can. Find two haunted objects. Like a couple items from a... You pocket the comb. Leave the locker. You don't need to go right now. Depicts a svelte young woman posing with an assault rifle. Anyway, the Skyrim. Uh, I plan on a no archery run. I was going to say no archery, no stealth, but then I realized that if I said no archery, no stealth, that was going to make it so much harder because 98% of that game is stealth. Uh, and it takes out two major plot lines, the Brotherhood of, like the Assassin's Brotherhood and the Thieves Guild. Uh, dig for the shoe pile. Find nothing in truth, but shoes in the pile. in here it's hard to say whether this heap of items or refuse covered which come from play crash or simply trash is, hasn't been taken out yet dig through the trash a sticky substance some sort of has been seeped through the trash pile and your hands are quickly covered in the stuff after searching for a minute you unearth a handful of interesting items inspect the cred stick I'm surprised the cred stick is still functional you still your pda and 200 yen is added to your account inspect the earring burnished steel formed in the shape of a metal salmon an intense primal fear washes over you as you touch its surface. This must be one of the th uh, things Shaman was looking for. Dented lunchbox? Seen better days. You can barely make out the face of a grinning troll in the front. Walk away. I'm worried my mic is too far away. Uh, but I plan on playing for quite a while. Uh, I'm going to like work on 
completing the Civil War, completing completing as much as the game as possible, and I want to do 100% no archery whatsoever. So if I'm even given a bow during the tutorial, I'm just going to throw it away. Feels as if you have found enough objects. Yes, here they are. Thank you. These items will, are all I need. It shouldn't take me long to... The hell is all this? She's the victim's sister, sir. She... That's a crime scene officer, not some shellish drum circle. Isn't it standard procedure to contact next of kin? Ma'am, consider yourself contacted. Now get the hell out. Come on, if we stay much longer, I'm liable to do something I'd regret. Or worse, something I'd enjoy. That man is an ass. She stares daggers at McCluskey from across the warehouse. There's no helping it now. I should be grateful you were able to collect these items before those cloud clouds carted everything off. Can we still summon the spirit? Oh. Not from here, I'm afraid. Spirits such as these have domains to which they are anchored. We will need to get back in there. We'll come back later once the coast is clear. Rented cops like these won't tie up the place for long. Not looking good now. You have any plans for this evening? A little break in entering, perhaps, under cover of darkness. Are you sure you're up for this? Um, if it means your brother's killer doesn't take another life, then yes. Thank you. Now, since we have time, we should probably enlist some help. They may post security overnight. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say you know where to find the kinds of people we need. You could say that. Good. I'll put the money up if you find the bodies. She produces a fistful of crumpled new unit from inside a leather pouch and starts to count it out, then shoves the whole wad at you. Meet me back here at midnight. The spirits be strong will be strong then. Return to the seamstress union. As you start to leave the warehouse, your comlink chirps and the face of Cody pops on the screen. Coy, Gregory, you in the middle of something? Just get jerked around by Lone Star. Same old thing. I hear you. I don't know if I ever told you this, but I was born in the Royale. BTL pushers like Stevie J ran the squats. Ran my world when I was growing up. That sounds nasty. It was for all kinds of reasons. I have a cousin, Gino, who's been missing for months. He hit the sprawl about a year ago and immediately fell into some in with some tweakers. Bad guys. They hooked him on high amp dream chips and started running using him for all sorts of dreck. Tried to help him, but he pushed me away. Then he disappeared. I've been shooting up BTL labs ever since trying to find him. I'm guessing you have a new lead? It's not a lead. Her face lights up. And she's running hot. Has a serious edge. I know exactly where he is this time. Got an old friend who eyeballed him herself. Mom away. Paco's with me, but we could use another hand. You in? I need you right now. On my way. I know you'd come. I'll send you a address. See you soon. Um, I think at Coyote Crusade here, once it loads in, I'm going to save, then I'm going to call it a night. Uh, my teeth are kind of floating around and bugging me out a bit. Um, but Skyrim for tomorrow night. Uh, I plan on making a character. I'm going to start the character creation. I'll probably start at character creation, then we'll go through the tutorial. I'll probably side with Stormcloaks at the beginning because the plan is heavy armor and I can, when you kill the one Imperial, you can get Imperial heavy armor at the beginning, so I'll probably go that route. Uh, Coyote's Crusade. The cluster of dilapidated buildings where Coyote told you to meet her appears to be the remembrance of a public housing projects. The buildings look like a cesspool filled with human debris. You find her standing with Paco on a street corner, eyeing the roofs, the doorways, the windows. Despite his attempts to engage her, Coyote barely says a word as the three of you weave your way through the tenements. She walks purposefully, her new cyber hand flexing open and fl closed with each step. It's unclear whether the action is voluntary or not. You circle around the back of the building and Cody jumps up, grabs the bottom rung of a fire escape ladder and pulls it down. Without a signal, she starts climbing towards the roof. Paco looks at you worriedly and starts up the ladder.
Thanks for meeting us, Gregory. I owe you one. No sweat. I figured you could use the backup. Yeah, you never know what sort of firepower to expect in one of these BTL squads. She brightens. Oh, hey, listen, I got good news for you. You know Sam's sister, Jessica? One of my contacts found her for me while you were on your way here. I called her and asked her to meet you at the Union later today. Hope that helps. Good job, thanks. Looks at you, her scarred face soft. Least I can do. All right, let's get this done. My cousin Gino should be in one of these squads past the door up ahead. I hear there's a whole lab set up in there. From my experience, there's usually a lookout watching for cops outside and a guard out at the door inside. Like I said, I don't know how much firepower to expect, but these guys are nasty. So stay on guard and I, want, I just want to get in, grab Gino and get out. Right behind you, babe. Let's do this. Find and rescue Gino from the BTL pushers. Coyote and Paco must survive. BTL clocker. Okay. But for this, I have nine now. Can I bump up? I could bump up my body once. I could get my quickness up one. Well, that's nice. Maximum trolls, maximum orcs, maximum human elves, dwarves. What's this? Oh, that's just maximum points for intelligence. Not much else happens after that unless you're doing decking and stuff a lot. Uh, we might just go with body to get more. To have more. Uh, Okay, we'll do that. We'll bump that up one so then we can move and get this next time. But we're up to, we have energy, enemy, HP, visible, and all that stuff now. So save game. Uh, yeah, we will call it there for tonight. Um, I'm a bit tired. It's been a week. Um, I've been sleeping lots more. So... But uh, yeah, tomorrow night, I uh, hope you all are interested in checking out some Skyrim. I'm going to do a no archery run. Uh, I have did it on my 360. Uh, and I do have all the DLC for the game. So I do have Hearthstone and stuff. So I want to build the build. So I want to build the houses that I can and buy all the houses. On my 360, I sided with the Stormcloaks and I owned three or four of the houses i own the house in winterhold in white run and in there's two other houses you can buy i thought but uh, i have everything except the last dlc that was available on 360 so i've got all that so i've done it before i've gotten quite a ways through i never completed the main story without using archery but i was doing all like the side quests trying to get all that tied away mostly just for the because i was experimenting exploring the game uh, but I do have an idea. Like, I was going after all the... Like, I had gone quite a ways into the main story, and I was going for the uh, Dragon Priest masks. So, uh, but we will start on that tomorrow night, and, yeah, we'll go from there. It should be a, it should be a fun time. So, uh, thank you all for watching. We will end now with a... Um, a quote from Charles Darwin. Maybe not Charles Darwin. Let's go with Mark Twain. Uh, the most important days of your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. And how about wrinkles merely indicate where the smiles have been. So thank you all for watching. And I will hopefully see you tomorrow night for a big, long Skyrim adventure. I am pumped up for that. So, And I'll probably start doing Skyrim on Saturdays and going for like a six, four or five hour stream at a time. 
play through quite a few hours of the, the game, so. I'll be back to Minecraft on Monday. I just wanted to change things up a bit. I might change up what I play during the week. So I'll have Skyrim on Saturdays. Minecraft's Monday, Tuesdays, probably. Uh, Wednesdays will probably be the day off. Sunday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesdays will be Minecraft. Wednesdays I'll take the day off. Tuesday, or Thursday, Fridays, maybe I'll play something like Car Mechanic Simulator. Or I'll find a JRPG or something simple to play. And uh, then Skyrim on Saturdays. So thank you guys for watching. And I will see you next time.